శ్రీ సాయి సచరిత్ర ద వండర్ఫుల్ లైఫ్ అండ్ టీచింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ సాయిబాబా చాప్టర్ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ ఫేవర్ షోన్ బై గివింగ్ భాగవత్ అండ్ విష్ణు సహస్రనామ దీక్షిత్స్ విఠల విజన్ గీతరహస్య కార్పాడేస్ This chapter describes how Sai Baba favored his devotees by granting them religious books after he had touched and consecrated them for parayan that is regular reading and certain other matters Om Shri Sai preliminary when a man takes refuge at the feet of the sadguru he gets the merit of bowing to the trinity that is బ్రహ్మ విష్ణు అండ్ మహేశ్వర అండ్ ఆల్సో పరబ్రహ్మ విక్టరీ బీ ఆన్ టు శ్రీ సాయి ద విష్ ఫుల్ఫిల్లింగ్ ట్రీ అండ్ ద ఓషన్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ హూ గివ్స్ అస్ సెల్ఫ్ రియలైజేషన్ ఓ సాయి క్రియేట్ ఇన్ అస్ రెవరెన్స్ ఫర్ యువర్ స్టోరీస్ లెట్ ద లీడర్ రీడర్స్ అండ్ ఆడియన్స్ డివోర్ దెమ్ విత్ ద సేమ్ రిలేష్ విత్ విచ్ ద చాతక్ బర్డ్స్ డ్రింక్ ద వాటర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద క్లౌడ్స్ అండ్ బికమ్ హ్యాపీ while listening to your stories let them and their families get all the true and pious emotions that is let their bodies prosper let their eyes be full of tears let their breath be steady let their minds be composed let their hair stand on end let them cry sob and quiver let their hostilities vanish when these things happen that is a sign of the grace of the guru dawning upon them when these emotion grow in you the guru is most pleased and will certainly lead you on the path of self realization the best way therefore to get free from the shackles of maya is our complete and whole hearted surrender to baba the vedas cannot take you across the ocean of maya it is only the sadguru who can do so and make you see the god in all creatures Om Namo Sai granting consecrated book the various methods of imparting instructions followed by baba have already been noticed in the previous chapters in this we shall deal with one aspect of it it was the habit of some devotees to take to baba some religious books of which they wanted to make a special study and to receive the same back from him after they were touched and consecrated by him while reading such book daily they felt that baba was with them once kaka mahajani came to shirdi with a copy of ekanathi bhagavat shama took this book to read in the masjid there baba took it from him touched it and turning some pages here and there gave it back to shama and asked him to keep it with him when shama said that it belonged to kaka and had to be returned to him no no replied baba as i have given it to you you better keep it it will be of use to you in this way many books were entrusted to shama kaka mahajani after a few days came again with another copy of same bhagavat and gave it in baba's hand then baba gave it back as prasad and asked him to preserve it well and assured him that it would stand him in good stead kaka accepted it with reverence om shri sai Shama and Vishnu Sahasranama Shama was very intimate devotee of Baba and Baba wanted to favor him in a particular way by giving him a copy of Vishnu Sahasranama as prasad This was done in the following way once a Ramadasi that is follower of Saint Ramadas came to Shirdi and stayed there for some time the routine he followed daily was as follows He got up early in the morning, washed his face, bathed, and then after wearing saffron-colored clothes and besmearing himself with sacred ashes, read Vishnu Sahasranama, a book giving a thousand names in the praise of Vishnu and held second in importance to Bhagavad Gita and Adhyatma Ramayana, a historic version of Rama's story with faith. He read these books very often. After some days Baba thought of favoring and initiating Shama with Vishnu Sahasranama he therefore called Ramadasi to him and said to him that he was suffering from intense stomach pain and unless he took senna pots that is 
Soramuki, a mild purgative drug, the pain would not stop. So he should please go to the bazaar, that is market, and bring the drug. The Ramadasi closed his reading and went to the bazaar. Then Baba came from his seat to Ramadasi's place of reading and took out the copy of Vishnu Sahasranama and after coming back to his seat said to Shama, Shama, this book is very valuable and efficacious, so I present it to you. You read it. Once I suffered intensely and my heart began to palpitate and my life was in danger. At that critical moment I hugged this book to my heart and then Shama, what a relief it gave me. I thought that Allah himself came down and saved me. So I give this to you. Read it slowly, little by little. Read daily one name at least and it will do you good. Shama replied that he did not want it and that the owner of it, the Ramadasi, would, who was a bad-tempered, obstinate and irritable fellow, would certainly pick up a quarrel with him. Besides, being a rust rustic himself, he could not read distinctly the Sanskrit, that is, Devanagari script, text of the book. Shama thought that Baba wanted to set him up against the Ramadasi by this act of his, but he had no idea what Baba felt for him. Baba must have thought to tie this necklace of Vishnu Sahasranama round the neck of Shama. As he was an intimate devotee, though a rustic, and thus save him from the miseries of the worldly existence, the efficacy of God's name is well known. It saves us from all sins and bad tendencies, frees us from the cycle of births and deaths. There is no easy, easier sadhana than this. It is the best purifier of our mind. It requires no paraphernalia and no restriction. It is so easy and so effective. This sadhana, Baba wanted Shama to practice, though he did not crave for it. So Baba forced this on him. It is also reported that long ago, Ekanath Maharaj similarly forced this Vishnu Sahasranama on a poor Brahmin neighbor and thus saved him. The reading and study of this Vishnu Sahasranama is a broad open way of purifying the mind and hence Baba trusts this on his devotee Shama. The Ramadasi returned soon with the Senna pots. Anna Chinchanikar, who was then present and wanted to play the part of Narad, that is the celestial Rishi who was well known for setting up confrontation between gods and demons and vice versa, informed him of what had happened. The Ramadasi at once flared up. He came down at once on Shama with full fury. He said that it was Shama who set Baba to send him away under the pretext of stomachache for bringing the medicine and thus took away the book. He began to scold and abuse Shama and remarked that if the book was not returned, he would dash his head. Shama calmly remonstrated with him, but in vain. Then Baba spoke kindly to him as follows, O Ramadasi, what is the matter with you? Why are you so turbulent? Is not Shama our boy? Why do you scold him unnecessarily? How is it that you are so quarrelsome? Can you not speak soft and tender words? You read the sacred books daily and still your mind is agitated and your passions uncontrolled. What sort of Ramadasi are you? You ought to be indifferent to all things. Is it not strange that you should poss possess this book so strongly? A true Ramadasi should have no mamata, that is attachment, but have samata, that is equality towards all. You are now quarreling with Shama for him your book. Go, take your seat. Books can be had in plenty with money, but not men. Think well and be considerate. What worth is your book? Shama had no concern with it. I took it up myself and gave it to him. You know it by heart. I thought Shama might read it and benefit thereby, and so I gave it to him. How sweet were these words of Baba, soft, tender, and nectar-like. Their effect was wonderful. The Ramadasi calmed down and said to Shama that he would take the Pancharatni Gita. In return, Shama was much pleased and said, Why one? I shall give ten copies in return. So the matter was ultimately settled. The question for consideration is why should the Ramadasi press for Pancharatni Gita, a book for which he never cared to know and why should he 
who daily read religious books in the masjid in front of Baba quarrel with Shama before him. We do not know how to apportion the bay blame and whom to blame. We only say that had this incident not happened, the importance of the subject, the efficiency of God's name and the significance of Vishnu Sahasranama would not have been brought home to Shama. So we see that Baba's mention of teachings and initiating was unique. In this case, Shama did gradually study the book and mastered its content to such an extent that he was able to explain it to Professor G. G. Narke, M.A. of the College of Engineering Pune, the son-in-law of Sriman Bhuti and a devotee of Baba. Om Namo Sai. Vithala Vision One day, while Kaka Sahib Dikshit was in meditation, after his morning bath in his vada at Shirdi, he saw a vision of Vithala. When he went to see Baba afterwards, Baba asked him, Did Vithala Patil come? Did you not see him? He is very elusive. Hold him fast, otherwise he will give you the slip and run. Then at noon, a certain hawker came there with 20 or 25 pictures of Vitala of Pandrapur for sale. Mr. Dikshit was surprised to see that the form of Vitala he saw in his meditation exactly tallied with that in the picture. And he was also reminded of Baba's words. He therefore bought one picture most willingly and kept it in his shrine for worship. Om Namo Sai Gita Rahasya Baba always loved those who studied Brahma Vidya, that is metaphysics, and encouraged them to give an instance. Once Bapu Sahib Jog received a post parcel, it contained a copy of Gita Rahasya by Lokamanya Tilak. Taking it under his armpit, he came to the masjid and prostrated before Baba. When the parcel fell at Baba's feet, Baba inquired what it was. It was opened then and there, and the book was placed in Baba's hand. He turned some pages here and there for a few minutes and took out a rupee from his pocket, placed it on the book and handed the same with the rupee to Jog and said to him, Read this completely and you will be benefited. Om Shri Sai Mr. and Mrs. Karpade Let us close this chapter with a description of the Karpades. Once Dada Sahib Karpade came with his family and lived in Shirdi for some months. The diary of his stay has been published in English in the Sri Sai Leela magazine first volume. Dada Sahib was not an ordinary man. He was the affluent and the most famous advocate of Amravati, that is Bira, and was a member of the Council of State Delhi. He was intelligent and a very good speaker. Still, he dared not open his mouth before Baba. Most devotees spoke and argued with Baba off and on, but only three, that is, Karpade, Nulkar and Bhuti kept always silent. They were meek, modest, humble and good-natured. Dada Sahib was able to expound Panchadashi, that is well-known Sanskrit treatise on the Advaita philosophy by the famous Vidyaranya. To others uttered no word. When he came to the masjid before Baba, a man, however, learned he may be, even in the Vedas, fades away before one who has realized Brahma and become one with it. Learning cannot stand before self-realization. Dada Sahib stayed for four months, but Mrs. Karpade stayed for seven. Both were highly pleased with their Shirdi stay. Mrs. Karpade was faithful and devout and loved Baba deeply. Every noon, she brought Nevidya herself to the masjid and after it was accepted by Baba, she used to return and take her meals. On seeing her steady and firm devotion, Baba wanted to exhibit it to others. One noon, she brought a dish containing sansa, that is wheat pudding, purees, rice, soup and kheer, that is sweet rice and other sundry articles to the masjid. Baba, who usually waited for hours, got up at once, went up to his seat and removing the cover from the dish, began to partake of the things eagerly. Shama then asked him, why this partiality? At times, you throw away dishes of others and do not care to look at them, but this appeals to you earnestly. What is the, what is the dish brought by this lady so sweet? This introduce us. Baba then explained, this food is really extraordinary. In former birth, this lady was a merchant's fat cow yielding much milk. Then she disappeared and took birth in a gardener's family. 
then in a kshatriya family and married a merchant then she was born in brahmin family i saw her after a very long time let me take some sweet morsels of love from her dish after seeing this baba did full justice to her dish washed his mouth and hands belched out as he was fully satisfied and resumed his seat then she bowed down and began to shampoo baba's legs and he began to talk with her and knead her arms while which were shampooing his legs on seeing this reciprocal service shama began to joke and said it is going on well it is a wonderful sight to see god and his bhakta serving each other after being pleased with her sincere service baba asked her in low and fascinating tone to chant raja ram raja ram then and always and said if you do this your life's object will be achieved your mind will attain peace and you will be immensely benefited to a person unfamiliar with spiritual matters this might appear as a polite gesture but really it was not so it was a case of what is technically called shaktipat that is transference of power from the guru to the disciple how effective was baba's words in an instant they pierced her heart and remained there this case illustrated the nature of the relation that should subsist between the guru and the disciple both should love and serve each other as one there is no distinction nor any difference between them both are one and one cannot live without the other the disciple placing his head at the guru's feet is a gross or outward vision really and internally they are both one and the same those who see any differences between them are at unripe and not perfect bow to shri sai peace be to all